Welcome everybody to a new presentation and in this presentation we're going to talk about uh, the radio opacities that are seen around the periapical area of the uh, of a tooth whether it is seen in a um, uh, periapical radiograph or it is seen in the OPG <coughs> uh, uh, a good source for this uh, lecture uh, actually you'll find more most of it is uh, on this website uh, where most of the, uh, the uh, written information actually is uh, taken and uh, other radiographs that you might see uh, will be uh, uh, during the presentation will also be uh, uh, referenced if they are uh, uh, resource from outer uh, uh, sources okay uh, to start with uh, in, in this presentation we would like to have a uh, an idea about the radio uh, opaque lesions that are associated with the root apex and the uh, radio opaque lesions that are around the root apex. In other words, we want to have an idea about the lesions or radio opaque lesions that are related to the tooth and those which are not related to the tooth. So if they are connected to the apex of the tooth or where they are located in the area around the apex. Uh, naturally, <clears throat> this presentation will not um, be uh, able or it's not intended to be conclusive of all the lecture uh, of all the radio opacities that are located in this area so uh, b b please be uh, be aware that uh, these are not uh, all the lesions that you might encounter in uh, in this lesion uh, Periapical radio opacities uh, can be uh, roughly uh, categorized into uh, 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 idiopathic osteosclerosis or it could be a condensing osteitis. Uh, it could be one of the different categories of the cemento osteosclerosis or it might be a hypersementosis or it could be a cementoblastoma so uh, if you would see a, a radio opacity that is uh, the, uh, connected to the tooth or around the tooth then most likely these lesions would fall into one of these categories according to how it appears on the clinical situation Idiopathic sclerosis to start with or, or idiopathic osteosclerosis uh, uh, synonyms are the dense bony island uh, or sometimes it is called inostosis. From the name uh, idiopathic it is a lesion, a radioopaque lesion of an unknown etiology uh, mostly seen in the posterior uh, uh, mandible, in the posterior part of the mandible and it is often associated with the apices of mandibular molars and premolars. However, they can be found anywhere in the jaws, but, but, but the, uh, the, the predominantly you would see them in the posterior premolar and the molar area. In the radiograph, you would uh, see them as a dense, homogeneous, uh, radio opacity so the uh, it will be very uh, d dense because it's hard bone homogeneous radio opacity uh, that has an amorphous shape when it is associated with a root and this is important a regular periodontal ligament space is maintained uh, around uh, uh, the, the, the periapical area and mostly if the tooth is otherwise necrotic, in most of the cases the tooth is vital. So this is an important pathognomotic lesion of the uh, uh, criteria of the lesion is that the tooth is mostly uh, uh, has a normal PDL. Uh, clinically, it is a vital tooth unless it is infected or necrotized to another uh, reason. And the lesion, the radio opaque, uh, blends into the adjacent cortices. Uh, 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 into uh, uh, the buccal and lingual or the buccal and the palatal cortices 
mostly buccal and lingual because it is in the, in the mandible, bleeds into the uh, adjacent cortices with no thinning or expansion. So you don't expect to see expansion of the mandible, uh, neither the, uh, there is thinning of the borders of, the, uh, of either the buccal or the lingual plates if they are uh, present in the area uh, in, the, in the mandible and uh, no treatment is necessary for lesions are present there and might stay there without any uh, uh, effect on either the surrounding teeth or the surrounding bone. <coughs> Uh, here, as you can see in this radiograph, uh, ha have a look on this OPG. Uh, in this OPG, you will see, uh, plus there is one interesting uh, area, uh, ha have a look on this bifid animal, uh, bifid, sorry, uh, condyle. Uh, however, this is not our topic, but what we are talking about is the radio opaque area which is located around the mesial root of uh, tooth number 36, the lower left uh, 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 molar. And you can see this is an uh, expanded or enlarged view. You will see that the, the, the tooth has a normal PDL. Of course, if you would go for a periapical radiograph, it would be better because but periapical radiographs, by all means, they have a better resolution. Uh, uh, and there is no harm in just, you know, confirming this lesion with a periapical radiograph. Now, as you could see here, that this uh, there is a normal PDL uh, in the area one, and uh, the two uh, the area is mostly uh, composed of a dense homogeneous area that mimics, uh, which within within an amorph uh, amorphous structure. And very important thing is that the lesion is not surrounded by a radiolucent border. Lesions, radio-opaque lesions, which are not surrounded by radio-opaque, radiolucent border lesions, which are not sub, uh, surrounded by a radiolucent border, are mostly <coughs> uh, 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 non-odontogenic in, uh, in, in their um, origin. And this is an important point to discuss. So uh, this is a case of uh, inostosis or uh, uh, condensing. Sometimes it is a condensing osteitis, and this is another uh, differential diagnosis of this lesion due to microtrauma. As you can see that uh, this patient has, due to the uh, problem in the uh, right condyle, you see that the occlusion is not even. Uh, on both sides, so there is kind of an occlusal over a trauma, micro trauma to this tooth, which might be an uh, uh, which might be a cause for condensing osteosis. This can be considered into the differential diagnosis of the lesion. Uh, another case which is uh, seldom seen in the maxilla, however, because we said uh, it is most uh, likely seen in the in the mandible. And you will see here that the lesion is located in the area of uh, one six, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, you, you see that the lesion is not separa separated from the uh, 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 from the surrounding bone. So it is kind of it, 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 if you look at it, if you look at it, see the the the, the, the resolution of the periapic radiographs. It, it gives you the chance to uh, have a look or compare between the lesion, the inostosis in this uh, case, and the bone trabecules on the surrounding bone, they look similar. It means that it is of the same uh, nature. Uh, uh, however, uh, in your differential diagnosis, you would consider condensing osteitis residual after an infection of previously infected uh, uh, or, uh, 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 or necrotized tooth that has been taken out and uh, it remains for a while so that it will be remodeled by bone or removed by bone. So you can see here that first we don't have a, a radiolucent border, amorphous uh, dense radio opacity that is close to the uh, 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 crest, alveolar crest. <coughs> 
Another lesion over here where you can uh, uh, again uh, look at the, uh, 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 the, 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 the type of bone which is forming this lesion and uh, if you want to make sure that this lesion has not co uh, co caused any expansion or thinning of the buccal and the lingual plates then in this instance you would go for a uh, occlusal radiograph so that uh, you would know if there is any expansion. Expansion in cases of bony enostosis or uh, idiopathic uh, bony sclerosis is very unlikely. So it is a lesion that may stay there as long. Uh, by the way, most of the cases, these cases are incidental findings in the radiograph. It means that it has, it doesn't cause any uh, problem for the patient. A closer look uh, with a periapical radiograph, w w well taken actually, uh, for proper quality, you will see that the PDL of the tooth is completely intact uh, and the lesion is uh, uh, is uh, is very close to the mesial root of this uh, uh, lower uh, four uh, uh, of the lower three six, and uh, the uh, the lesion it actually it has no uh, border radiolucent. You can you cannot differentiate it from the surrounding bone. Plus that it has the uh, the, the appearance uh, of an amorph amorphous yet um, um, a dense uh, radio-opaque bone uh, with uh, most likely a, 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 a tooth. We cannot, of course, we cannot judge from the radiograph, but apparently there is no reason to suggest that this tooth is infected or necrotized, and then we would uh, 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 suspect condensing osteitis. So most of the cases, the tooth, this tooth is vital, and it, uh, uh, it, it doesn't have any relation to, uh, to the lesion which we are seeing in the, uh, at the apex of the mesial root. Uh, now, speaking of condensing osteitis, uh, uh, co condensing osteitis is a, another case. Uh, this is here, it is a bone proliferation in response to inflammation. So you must have a, an inflammation or a trauma to a, a tooth so that you will have a case of condensing osteitis. So bony proliferation in response to inflammation and it is only found at the apex of an un an unvital tooth. Non-vital tooth. So uh, 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 this is one uh, uh, one very big uh, difference from the uh, uh, idiopathic bone islands. Uh, you have to have a an uh, unvital tooth. Uh, the sclerosis, however, here it is uh, 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 irregularly shaped. It doesn't have a specific shape. And the important thing is that you have a widened periodontal ligament space or periapical radiolucency between the root and the area of the sclerosis because of the inflammation uh, of the uh, periapical area. So the, 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 the sclerotic bo bone <coughs> here may remain after the treatment of the inflammation and it is termed as osteosclerosis or bone scar. Just like the radiograph that we have seen earlier, sometimes bone is formed uh, 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 in, in response to the inflammation of the uh, 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 inflammation of a necrotic tooth. Uh, 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 so it remains after the tooth has been re removed or treated like a root canal treatment. And lesions that may, may look similar uh, is the idiopathic uh, uh, osteosclerosis, uh, cemento, uh, cementoma or cemento osseous dysplasias, and cementoblastomas. However, most of these are uh, lesions are associated with <coughs> vital teeth. Uh, as you can see here in this OPG, uh, please have a look at this uh, uh, tooth, which is the lower uh, left third molar. You can see that the tooth uh, has a big uh, occlusal filling 
and uh, the, the filling itself actually um, 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 it is surrounded by recurrent carious lesion and in most of the cases uh, you know uh, these, uh, the, the, the tooth gets or the pulp uh, is necrotic uh, and it stands for there for, for a long time. One important thing of these uh, uh, lesions, the osteosclerosis, is that most of the 90% of cases you will find them in the mandible for three reasons. First of all, the mandible uh, does not allow expansion uh, as you would see it in the maxilla. So if there is a case of an inflamed area in the maxilla, bone, because of its thinner nature and uh, it, uh, uh, thinner buccal plates, it allows expansion of the maxilla. So it would the, 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 the chances of bone deposition in the area are less. Two, uh, unlike the mandible, the mandible is thick, the thick cortical plates, buccal and lingual, so the expansion is uh, less likely in the, in the mandible. The second thing is that it is always associated with a low-grade uh, 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 infection of the root, so it does, you, you don't find a condensing osteitis with acute uh, infections of teeth. So it, it, because it, it is, it, it is a, a response of bone to the, uh, you know, chronic inflammatory exudate and the irritation coming from the root apex. So it responds by laying down bone uh, and uh, in, in response to trying to contain, to confine the, the inflammation. And the third factor that you would see is uh, the uh, 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 it is always found in uh, uh, people with uh, high immunity or high immune response and a uh, high immune response you will find it in, in young adults uh, males or females uh, are the same in this case so you you would find you would expect condensing osteitis in a young adult low-grade infection and in most of the cases, you will find it in the mandible. Uh, you will see here that uh, 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 in this instance, for this uh, uh, this tooth, have a look of, uh, on in this tooth, which is being root canal treated for an infection. First of all, you will see the widened PDL in both a mesial and the distal roots, and because this is of a long-standing uh, 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 nature and it is in the mandible, you will see that the bone has tried to confine the, confine the lesion, uh, trying to stop the, the exudate that is coming from the, from the infected tooth by laying down a um, bone. Uh, and this is a typical case of condensing osteitis. If you concentrate here more, uh, because of the long, uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, um, um, chronic le le lesion or the chronic nature of this lesion, you will see that the, uh, uh, there is some uh, kind of root resorption if you compare it to the mesial root over here. However, you see that this widening of the PDL in this area uh, is not uh, 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 it seems that it has to, uh, uh, it's not as severe as that one, the one, or not uh, as chronic as it is in the distal root. So the the, the chances of laying down of bone uh, in the uh, in the distal root or, or more, and uh, the 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 the, uh, the chances of formation of condensing osteitis is uh, noted in this area. Uh, before I go to the uh, uh, the, the other slide, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, condensing osteitis. I have seen cases, and you must have seen cases, that are associated with uh, micro trauma, long, long, um, uh, chronic, uh, small uh, amounts of trauma. Uh, this happens in cases of uh, like mild occlusion. Uh, plunger cusps, uh, uh, in cases of, uh, you know, uh, any case where the tooth is subjected to uh, long-standing, not severe, uh, not a severe uh, trauma. Uh, the, uh, this uh, force, which has been, which, which, which takes a long time, however, it's not a severe force, it will initiate or it will enhance the bone to lay down uh, uh, thick, thick 
layers of bone in response to the low-grade trauma at the apex. Uh, these cases usually respond by the uh, correction of the occlusion in the area. So you would see, I may add another uh, reason for the or a case or where we, you would expect condensing osteitis is by the cases of a low-grade, uh, uh, long-standing uh, micro trauma uh, to uh, to a teeth, to a tooth or teeth, and mostly you would see it expected also in the mandible. Uh, now, the other entity which we are going to discuss here is the uh, cementoosseous uh, dysplasias or dysplasia, uh, because there are many. Uh, and this, uh, uh, what we are ha having is that we are going, or we will have a case of replacement of normal trabecular bone with fibrous tissue and cementum like abnormal bone. So, uh, what is supposed to be a normal bone? From, formed from osteoblasts, it will be replaced by an abnormal uh, bone, which is mainly formed from a fibrous and cementum uh, 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 like tissue. Uh, it, it, this, in particular, passes into three stages. It will start as an uh, 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 osteolytic case whereas it's completely radiolucent, which is the first phase, and it will start as a well-defined radiolucency associated with the apices of teeth, in most of the cases of the lower anterior teeth, mostly seen in females. Now, as the lesion matures, the maturing we mean that is laying down of abnormal bone, which has the mostly fibrous or cementum-like, the uh, the radio opacities small radio opacity which is crescent like shaped uh, uh, radio opacity they will start to appear around the tooth apex now when the lesion goes in, into its late stage or the final stage the lesion will present as a dense radio opacity which has a radiolucent border remind you here is that because it has a radiolucent border, it means that it is formed of cementum. So it is mostly of an odontogenic uh, uh, nature uh, uh, that surrounds the radio opacity in its least stage. Now, in most of the cases, there is a periphery of cyclorotic bone varying of a varying width that would appear as a cortical margin or a cortical outline around the radiolucency. Now, when the cementoosseous dysplasia directly involves the teeth, the lamina dura may be lost and the PDL space will appear either abnormal, widened, or may be lost. If it would appear uh, for, uh, uh, if it will involve directly the teeth, that is a, uh, 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 if it is very close to the apex. So you can find it either in the bone, separated from the apex of the tooth, or you will find it uh, in close relation to the tooth. If it is found close to the tooth, you will see, you would expect the lamina dura would disappear. The PDL will be widened. Uh, and or it's some, in, in some instances it will be lost. And in all those cases and all these stages, whether it is in its primary stage, middle stage, or the late radio opaque stage, the tooth remains vital. Tooth or teeth, which are affected by the, by the lesion. And it is mostly seen uh, in the middle age to older black uh, uh, Asian females. So, uh, in this lesion, you would expect a thinning or expansion of the cortices, unlike the, uh, unlike the uh, idiopathic bone islands, there is no thinning or expansion. Uh, however, they look, uh, uh, and here uh, you have a radiolucent border. The, this has a like a, 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 you know, uh, mostly seen in the lower anterior mandible, the condensing of the, uh, the uh, bone islands are seen in the premolar molar areas. 
However, both conditions, the teeth remain vital, whether it is in the uh, anostosis or in the uh, cementoosseous lesions. Uh, in the cementoosseous lesions, uh, they may cause the expansion of the cortices uh, and uh, 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 they mi there might be some uh, expansion in the, in the area which also gives it, or, or you can differentiate it from the inostosis. Inostosis is unlikely or very seldom, or actually it doesn't cause any expansion of the thinning or the, uh, of the mandible. The cementoosseous lesions, they have three variants according to uh, the, 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 it's, uh, the, the number of the lesions which are present. The lesion might be focal, and when we say focal cementoosseous dysplasia, it involves a single site, typically in the posterior mandible, if it is focal. And if it is periapical, <coughs> periapical cementoosseous dysplasia predominantly affects the periapical lesions of the uh, anterior mandible. There is another form which is more flourishing, that, uh, that's why it is called the florid, which is an extensive form of cementoosseous dysplasia, which affects three or more quadrants, it is a widespread involvement of the uh, of uh, uh, of one jaw, <coughs> and mostly for the cases it is seen in the mandible. So, if it is uh, focal, you will see it in the posterior mandible, single lesion. If it is multiple uh, periapical, you will see it confined to the uh, lower incisors, and if it is florid, you will see it in one or more area of the jaw uh, uh, with a predominancy or likeliness to involve the uh, mandible. Uh, these lesions that do not require a, a, a biopsy and uh, there is no treatment indicated. However, you need a follow-up uh, radiographs, uh, yearly radiographs, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, make sure that the lesion do not expand uh, sometimes, sometimes, in the, if it is affected with the focal lesions or the florid lesions, the, there is a case of a simple boneless uh, cyst formation, and this might be secondary infected. Uh, so keep uh, observing those lesions just to uh, make sure or uh, the lesion does not uh, uh, proceed to a simple bone cyst. Now this is a case. Have a look at the lower uh, compare between the maxilla over here and the mandible. Now you can see that the mandible is more uh, these, uh, let's start from uh, from this lesion. See, there is a mixture. These are mature. This is, by the way, if you see it more than once, then it is it is a florid cementoosseous dysplasia. You will find it here, 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 and then uh, it, over here. And then you can find also in the lower molar area, if you go up, you will, say, you will find it uh, associated with the upper molar tooth, and you will, say, you will see it also over here and this area. So this is a case of florid osseous, uh, uh, florid cementoosseous dysplasia, and all the teeth here, by the way, are vital if they are clinically uh, examined. However, uh, 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 if there is a necrotic tooth, it does not cause cementoosseous dysplasia. If the necrosis might be from another reason, from for any carious lesion, whatever. But these these cases are mostly seen with with vital teeth. You would expect in severe cases uh, thinning of the mandible. If if you see if you go for a CBCT or an, a better or uh, occlusal radiograph, if you don't have a CBCT, uh, and keep monitoring these. Uh, lesions on a yearly basis so that uh, uh, some of those lesions might end up with a simple bone cyst. Another lesion, another radiograph here where you can see the uh, radio, uh, radiolucent border that is surrounding the each of these uh, lesions. See, the, those lesions are always, always separated from the, uh, from the surrounding bone by the radiolucent border, uh, and they, they assume this uh, crescent-like appearance, uh, a circular appearance. Here, in this case, especially, uh, the mandible is more affected 
than the maxilla. Actually, if you look closer to the maxilla, you will not see uh, any any of the lesions that are affecting the maxilla, at least yet. But uh, again, the incidence of these lesions is more uh, in the lower uh, jaw, uh, and you will find it on the right and the left uh, teeth uh, equally. If it is very apical, uh, then uh, cementoosseous dysplasias, you will see them uh, depending on which stage that, um, uh, uh, of the lesion. You would expect it to see it if it is in the first osteolytic stage, where is the uh, uh, early replacement or resorption of bone, and then it will appear radiolucent. Then it, as bone is replaced by cementus, uh, cementum or uh, fibro, uh, fibrotic tissue, then uh, it will start to uh, mature, and then it will assume the uh, uh, radio-opaque lesion. And uh, uh, here you would expect it to see a, um, a mixture of both. So it is a mixed lesion, again, depending on the which stage of the, uh, uh, of the lesion uh, uh, you have taken the video of. Hypersementosis, by definition, pathologically speaking, it is the buildup of excess cementum on the roots of surface, uh, on the roots, uh, uh, root surfaces. Naturally, uh, cementum is present in the, on the root. Now, this deposition of cementum typically occurs within the apical third on the posterior mandibular teeth and may give the root a bulbous appearance, a clubby appearance, if it appears on the, uh, or it is originating on the um, lower third of the root apex, of the root. In all instances, the tooth is vital. The PDL space and the laminar dura will remain regular and continuous around the areas of hypersementosis because, because hypersementosis is actually occurring on the outer surface of the, uh, of the root. So the, the PDL and the, lamina, and the lamina dura are not affected whatsoever. The exact etiology is unknown and conditions, hypersementosis, may be Oh, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is associated, not be, maybe, it is associated with other congenital, uh, with, with other systemic diseases like the Paget's disease, hyperpituitarism, and Gardner's syndrome, and should be ruled out if the hypersomentosis is generalized. In Paget's disease, hyperparathyroidism, uh, uh, sorry, hyperpituitarism, and the Gardner syndrome, you don't get local hypersomatosis. In all these three diseases, you would expect to see generalized hypersomatosis of all teeth. If you would see this, then please uh, consider the three uh, diseases mentioned over here, Paget's hyperpituitarism and Gardner syndrome. No treatment is necessary, the teeth are vital. Extraction of teeth, however, with hypersementosis may prove to be more difficult because of the bulbous root or because of the enlarged uh, uh, nature of the, uh, of the root. A typical case of hypersementosis, however, this radiolucency is not related to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, tooth, uh, to the tooth itself. Uh, this is because of a periodontal condition of the tooth. However, have a look at those compared between the root of the five and the root of the six. See, at the middle third, the tooth, the root starts to enlarge in size, as uh, here, the same. Okay? Uh, if the tooth is, if this tooth is not uh, affected by, by a periodontal pocket, and here, uh, either a periodontal pocket or you see even the bifurcation involvement, which might be a, um, a, 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 an endoperial lesion. In either case, if the tooth is vital, then you would expect to see the PDL and the lamina dura will remain vital throughout the whole length of the, of the root. Another case where you will see two cases, actually, this is combined, a, a hypersomentosis of the area, of the root, 
and there is condensing osteitis, which might be in response to an infected root. Uh, mind you, uh, the hypercementosis is always does not is is, is associated with a, <coughs> excuse me is associated with a with a vital tooth, unless the tooth is as we said uh, earlier. Uh, is uh, affected by uh, another uh, lesion that might have caused the uh, uh, the necrosis of the tooth. In this case, in particular, because because we see uh, bone formation uh, 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 in the apex, then we would expect an inflammatory response to the low-grade infection, which is typically in a lower molar tooth. Another tooth over here, see the clubbing or the bulbous uh, appearance of the tooth uh, uh, of the root. Uh, up till here, it is normal. Then it starts to enlarge uh, in size, and it is surrounded by a normal PDL. Uh, and the, uh, the lamina dura here is disappeared because, but the, the lamina dura in this tooth <laughs> is, a, is present, uh, or the PDL is present throughout the whole length of the tooth. Another case where you can see normal PDL normal lamina dura surrounding the mesial and the buccal roots compare the mesial, uh, uh, mesial and distal roots compare the enlarged area now here the hypersemptosis is the whole involving the whole length of the root here it has started at the mesial third of the root compare this tooth to, uh, to the uh, to the other one over here you will see that there is this tooth the the seven lower seven appears normal slender root but in this area uh, of of both teeth, the the, the tooth will will uh, will will enlarge uh, due to the uh, the uh, to excessive formation or deposition uh, of the um, uh, cement. Now, another case which is cementoblastoma. Cementoblastoma uh, is uh, uh, is a benign odontogenic neoplasm of the cementoblasts and cementum. So we're talking here about a tumor of, uh, uh, of odontogenic origin, which is basically the uh, cementoblasts and the material which it forms, that is the cementum. Mostly involve the mandibular premolars or first molars of young adults appears radiographically as a well-defined radio opacity or a mixed density lesion, yet it's still well-defined with an amorphous or spoke or wheel-like appearance uh, uh, attached to and surrounding the roots of teeth. And the tooth is always vital. Now, the outline of the roots are usually obscured by the radio opacity of the lesion, and you would expect external root resorption in response to the pressure of the uh, tumor uh, or the uh, neoplasm, sorry, and pain and swelling might also be present even if the tooth is vital. Suspected cementoblastoma should be biopsies and sent for uh, 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 for uh, histopathological evaluation. So, what we see here is that this typical uh, appearance of cementoblastoma, uh, uh, which is here you can find it associated with the mesial root, and it has cast a shadow on the uh, uh, distal root, what is called as the snowball appearance, and it is always associated or it has a clear radiolucent border that is surrounding or separating the um, lesion from the surrounding bone. Tooth is vital in most of the, in all cases, and pain might be felt uh, in the area. Uh, and uh, because of this, uh, uh, because of the, this, uh, this lesion, you would expect tooth root resorption, and you might fa face a possible uh, uh, um, difficulty in extraction unless you want to excise the lesion uh, separately. So uh, with this radiograph, we will come to an end to our presentation. And I hope we have uh, now an idea uh, about the periapical radio opacities that have, are associated 
with the uh, apex of a tooth, whether they are located in uh, or seen in an OPG or with an uh, periapical radiogram. Thank you very much.